Before we move on, I want to address this whole idea of there being slight variations in each gospel. Now, a very important tenet to many evangelicals today is the Bible is inerrant. That's the word they use. It wasn't a word that was used by Christians really up until the 1800s. What happened is liberal theologians came in and they pretty much made, uh, just pretty much chucked the bunk and squashed the Bible. The fundamentalists, in return, took the position that the Bible's inerrant, and you have to declare the Bible's inerrant, everything in it is true. Uh, if we use the definition of inerrancy and just say it is capable, incapable of being wrong, I'm on board. Fine. No problem. I agree. It's good. The problem lies not in the scripture, but it lies in the different way we define error. And skeptics use their different definition of error to jump on passages like this, where there are slight variations in the wording, and they present this as evidence of error. They approach this whole concept of inerrancy as though the gospel writers were supposed to be stenographers and are just writing down everything exactly, precisely, what, how it was said. Um, the reality is, in the ancient world, that type of precision wasn't really a thing in their culture. And to be honest, it's not a thing in our culture either. That's not how we speak either, with actual precise exactness. Put it this way. Imagine you're in court. These three gentlemen testify as to what they saw. You would be absolutely convinced and blown away with how identical their testimony is. They're relating the exact same event. They're relating the same thing that was said to them. If the defense attorney tried to get all picky and ridiculous, saying, oh, well, the one said the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, but this other one said the kingdom of God, after it comes with power, we would laugh at him for just being so petty and ridiculous. So I would say rather than using a 21st century concept of inerrancy, which can be a problem if we hang our hat on it, because I'll let you know before you discover it for yourself. In the Bible, there's places where they use different numbers, different measurements. This is like in uh, Kings versus Chronicles to describe the same thing. There's different phraseology like we have here to communicate the same sermon. And there's also phenomenological descriptions like we talked about, and we're actually going to talk about it again today, the mustard seed. You get hung up on, well, is the mustard seed really the smallest seed in the world? There's... Some in South America, they're smaller. He's just describing, he's communicating what he wants to communicate. So, what I would say, instead of people flipping out at me for saying it's not, Aaron's probably not the best word to use, what I'm going to put forward is we should use the description for Scripture that Scripture uses for itself. And the word Scripture uses for itself is infallible. So I'm not saying the Bible has errors. I'm saying it is not as obsessed with irrelevant details the way we are. So in Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, God says, For just as rain and snow fall from the heaven, do not return without watering the earth, making it bud and sprout, and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please. And it will prosper where I send it. So God's word never fails. It accomplishes everything that God intends it to accomplish. He's not worried about a stenographer's account of getting everything precisely accurate. What he's worried about is communicating to his elect exactly what he wants them to know. Now since we're fallible people, and we can misinterpret things, these slight variations in Scripture don't confuse things. They actually clarify. See what I mean? If they use the exact word in each gospel and you misinterpret what that word means, you're going to misinterpret it in every single gospel because it's the same word. Now, the fact that the evangelists use synonyms, that further illuminates for us exactly what it means. Says it one thing, if you misinterpret it in another one, he explains exactly what he's talking about.